program, the Foreign Investment Review Agency, the creation of a massive number of government agencies, crown corporations, we have wage and price controls, all reflective of a man who had an economic manifesto where the goal and the role of government in society was big and strong and ultimately damaging. Now, people say, okay, well maybe he didn't spend a lot of money, but you know, the big issue is the debt. And it wasn't Trudeau that gave us the debt, it was Mulroney. And it was Cretchen who gave us the debt. Um, they, they, and Trudeau in his memoirs talks about how much debt accumulated under Mulroney. Think about this. Over his 15 and a half years in office, Trudeau spent $55 billion more on programs. When I say programs, I'm talking, let's put the debt and the interest costs aside. He spent $55, more million, $55 billion more on programs than he took in in revenue. He didn't pay one nickel towards interest on the debt. We were simply borrowing to, um, to pay the interest on the debt. He left us with a $131.5 billion interest hole and a $55 billion deficit on programs. Mulroney collected $41.5 billion more in revenue than he spent on programs. And get order of this, Jean Chrétien, the man who, the liberal who, had, who was to inherit Trudeau's legacy, who governed quite differently from Trudeau, his revenues exceeded with program spending by $455 billion. So we had both Mulroney and Chrétien include, accumulating these mass operational surpluses. But it's because they were saddled with Trudeau's debt, the interest on Trudeau's debt, the high interest costs from the, from the inflation that Trudeau inflicted on the economy. Remember prime rate at over 20%? Uh, during the Trudeau era, the debt was, had accumulated at that level. Um, it was because of Trudeau's out-of-control spending and inclination to borrow against our children's future um, that we had this massive debt problem. Okay, so maybe people say he wasn't so great on the economy, maybe he didn't contribute to the debt, but, you know, he contributed to social justice in Canada. He really reached out and helped the poor in this country. Now, poverty for seniors did decline under Trudeau, with enhancements to old age security and enhancements to the guaranteed income supplement. But Trudeau, in his memoirs, claimed as a result of his policies overall that the rate of poverty in Canada was cut by one half. It's, it's, it's a statistic that we hear often. It's repeated in almost every biography that's written about Trudeau. He cut the poverty rate in half, and that's why we should support him. So, I thought it was worth looking at that particular statistics and spent the better part of a week in the library at Statistics Canada and discovered for the first time that the data that Trudeau was relying upon was quite erroneous. How he measured poverty in 68 compared to how he measured poverty in 1984 were two completely unreconciled measures. It wasn't true that he reduced poverty by 50%. There was a marginal uh, decrease in, in, in poverty. But when he left office, 43% of unattached seniors lived in poverty, as did one in six children in Canada, and 42.5% of families headed by a woman lived in poverty, compared with just 13% when Trudeau took office. The gap in income between the top quintile and the lower quintile, um, and their share of income over Trudeau's 15 and a half years in office, changed not one iota over his time in office. Another I mean, we all remember, or maybe not all of us, I mean, there, are, there are some young people in the room who may not remember, but you know, let me just tell you, I, I, one of the reasons I wrote, wrote this book was to introduce Pierre Trudeau to a new generation of Canadians who may not have been subject to all the men, but let, let them at least start with the truth about the man. But we remember the images of him paddling his canoe, it's what he has on the front page of his memoirs, in the far north, you know, with parkas around, and you know, he certainly loved to experience nature. He's viewed as a great environmental prime minister. But the reality is that can on environmental measures, Canada fell behind under Pierre Trudeau. We can give him credit, and some conservatives do, for subsidizing the price of the oil sands and contributing towards the development of the oil sands, for opening up the far north to exploration. He was also a big believer in nuclear power. I just, I say this because um, it's not what Trudeau's known for. He's known to be a great environmental prime minister. Um, and ex 
extensive conversations I had with Elizabeth May. She said, she's, she's urged me, don't compare Pierre Trudeau um, to, in, to leaders of today with their sensitivity on the environment. Compare him with Richard Nixon, of all people. And she said, compared to Richard Nixon, um, Trudeau's environmental record comes up rather poor. So, critical Pierre Trudeau here. So I might say, well, if he was so bad, why did he hold office for so long? How did he win four or five elections if he was so bad? Well, remember this. After 1968, Pierre Trudeau lost every single election he fought outside of the province of Quebec. <coughs> he didn't lose them by a little. He lost them badly. Conservatives, and, and he went NDP to some degree, but mostly conservatives, beat it outside Quebec by a margin of two to one. But all along, Trudeau was sweeping Quebec over five elections, he won 84% of all seats in Quebec. In his last campaign, he won 74 of 75 seats in, in Quebec. And why wouldn't they love him in Quebec? He's a NATO son. He implemented official bilingualism. They love the unemployment reforms. He uh, injected massive amount of funds into regional development programs, a large portion of which went to Quebec for the sole reason that he was trying to uh, create a... Uh, what Robert Barassa called profitable federalism for Quebec. But, of course, Trudeau never faced voters in Quebec after uh, the 1980 election, after he betrayed the Constitution of Mont. I'll talk about that in a second. So he won because of Quebec. Um, we're also told, um, beyond you know, winning all these elections, that he was a source of great inspiration to Canadians. You know, he changed the culture. Lawrence Martin said, you know, you had to experience it. To, to, you had to be there to know what he did to the nation to rise up our, our hopes and spirits and dreams. Now, what's the evidence of that? I mean, you would think if he was so inspirational that he would drive people out to the polls to vote for him. But what's interesting is in the two elections before Trudeau, voter turnout was 77%. In Trudeau's five elections, it was 73% of the voter turnout. So voter turnout was lower under Trudeau. And you might say, well, is that just a trend? But in the two elections after Trudeau, this is the two elections that the conservatives won under Brian Mulroney, voter turnout went back up. So the lowest voter turnout of the, say, two elections before Trudeau, five of Trudeau, two after, the lowest voter turnout was while Trudeau was leading the country. But they say, oh, Trudeau, Trudeau mania. I mean, that was something. Everybody knows about Trudeau mania. Even the Canadian Museum of History, the new, they call it, it's a great museum. I'm glad they're changing it. Uh, they're doing an exhibition on Trudeau mania. Now, the only part of that is in 1968, the voter turnout, not the voter turnout, but the vote, popular vote for Trudeau was 45%. There were 12 other elections in the 20th century where the winning party won more than 45 percent. Brian Mulroney, in 1984, won over 50 percent of the vote. They don't call it Mulroney media. Even in his second election in 1988, he almost had the same popular vote as Trudeau had with, with Trudeau media. But you know, we're led to believe that he was the great messiah and he captured the spirit of the nation. Not only the spirit of the nation, the myth is Trudeau put Canada on the map. He was the great international statesman that won us all kinds of uh, attention and, and plots, and, and we were the inspiration of the world under Trudeau. The reality is that Trudeau undermined our uh, relationship with our allies, pointlessly annoyed our major trading partners, to which, you know, when he was going to America talking about his great peace initiative, one American commentator said, that his proposals would be taken with all the seriousness in Washington as if they had come from Boys Nation. Another commentator said, oh, Trudeau, that, you know, that's quite an idea, but he doesn't have enough country to fulfill his ambitions. He was the darling of third world dictators and despots, but in capitals around the world, he was marginalized and ridiculed. As for being a citizen of the world, which he claimed to be, um, Trudeau said he, and he did, um, abandoned nuclear weapons, which Canada held, under Lester Pearson, our Nobel Peace Prize winning prime minister. We had nuclear weapons in Canada, and Trudeau set them aside. 
And here's what he said when he was abandoning nuclear weapons for Canada. He said, I am not interested in protecting a few Canadian cities if this means we, we will be consenting to a kind of policy which we think is dangerous to the world. I am not interested in protecting Canadian cities if it means it, having nuclear weapons would be dangerous to the world. Well, tell that to the people living in Canadian cities. <laughs> tell me, what other leader of a G7 country, um, what other member of the OECD would, would be uh, honored um, at, at when, when a leader died to have Fidel Castro as a pallbearer? Was that a tribute for Canada to have Fidel Castro? Can you imagine Fidel Castro showing up at the funeral? Oh, I don't know, Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. I get that. <laughs> never have. What other world leader would have died that would have caused the Cuban government to declare three days of official mourning when Pierre Trudeau passed? Or um, to fly their flags at half mast? What other G7 leader, other than Pierre Trudeau, would name his child for the Russian ambassador to Canada, as he did with Alexander, or um, make his official nickname Sasha, which is the Russian equivalent to Alexander, except someone who was very comfortable in the Soviet Union. Now, some of Trudeau's great defenders say, ah, but he is the father of a multicultural nation, the father of a multicultural Canada in his policies. Let me just say this. The Multiculturalism Act reflected on its surface a demographic, a demographic reality. And it was supported unanimously, obviously, by all parties in the House of Commons. Trudeau loved multiculturalism because it was a counterweight to Quebec nationalism. So, okay, thank you very much. So Canada is a multi-ethnic nation. That is a reality. But multiculturalism to Pierre Trudeau and to the Liberal Party um, it was a political tool that he used to curry favors with multicultural communities in Canada. Had he used multiculturalism as a, and, the, and the multiculturalism office and the resources dedicated to multiculturalism to help teach new immigrants English and French, to help give